What's up pals? Welcome to the Your Random Pal channel. Today I'm at a very unique place. A lot of y'all, probably most y'all have never even heard of it. It's called Collection 21. Now, looking behind me, it looks exactly like a car museum, but it's not. This is actually one man's personal collection and he has it open to the public during certain days and certain hours so you can come and see it. Now this Collection 21 car collection is located in Erlanger, Kentucky. It's a Northern Kentucky area. And there's a website down below in the description. So you can click on that and you can check out all the details. But it's open to the public and for a small donation of $15, it goes to a charity called Honk. And 100% of the proceeds go to that. So for a good cause, come out here, check out this collection of cars. There's over 200 cars, mostly classic American cars. There's only like three cars that are not American made in here. It's a really cool place. My first time being here. And I'm gonna show you a little tour of this place so you can see for yourself. And maybe you will come out here and check it all out in person. Uh, my name's David. I'm, I'm the director of the nonprofit that you all just donated to. And I'll tell you just a little bit about us and then I'll give you an overview of the collection and give you all a chance to um, ask whatever questions you have. This collection is owned by one individual. Uh, there's about 220-ish vehicles here. Um, he's a local guy. He doesn't like to share too much about himself, um, but he does. Uh, he's been collecting cars and trucks um, for over 30 years. Over time, been sharing his collection. He had been doing it on uh, an appointment basis. Um, he really collects cars because he loves them, um, but he also wanted to have something good come out of it. And so about a year ago, um, he started opening his doors to his collection and um, giving an opportunity for 100% of the donations to come to Hawk. He doesn't like to share too much about himself, but um, he is a local Northern Kentuckian, um, born and bred, and um, did not come to uh, this kind of, I guess, achievement by um, it being given to him. He worked for it, so. Just out of curiosity, do you know what his very first car for his collection was? Uh, I've heard two different stories. One, it was a truck. One, it was a van. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, I don't know what the true story is. What questions do we have? Yes. How many AMC Gremlins you got? Zero. <laughs> Zero. Oh, man. <laughs> So behind me, this gorgeous white car is a Kaiser Darren. And check this out. This car was only made one year. It's number 17 of 435 produced. And these doors are its most unique feature. It's claim to fame. Absolutely gorgeous. Now the power for this Kaiser Darren comes from a 161 cubic inch inline six motor and it's made it to a three-speed manual transmission with overdrive. This car that's very familiar to me, an 87 Buick Grand National, which I also used to own an 87 Buick Grand National. Now this Grand National here is a hard top and it has a mechanical speedometer where his mind was a T-top and had a digital dash. And here's a Pontiac, and here's a Pontiac. And since I'm with the Louisville Pontiac Club, I figured I'd showcase a few at this uh, collection here. And there's also another one in here, a GTO. Not that this one's not a GTO as well, but a different vintage. Oh, and this little Grand Prix here, it's a turbo. So if you like to drive excitement, buy a Pontiac, because they build excitement. Here we have a 1940 Cadillac, and this is luxury. Even back in the day, as you can see, this 40 Cadillac came with heated seats. 
You wouldn't think of that as an option back in the 1940s, but it was. And this Cadillac here has it. Now this 1940 Cadillac, I mean, it's long. It looks like a limousine. It is a behemoth. And it makes this little car back here look very, very tiny. An American Bantam, 1938 vintage. Looks like it's been squished in. It's the exact opposite of that 1940 Cadillac you just saw. And this could definitely qualify as a back in the day sports car because it's only got room for two people. But it's a bench seat. Maybe you could squeeze a third one in there. So tiny, it's cute. Right in front of me is a 58 Studebaker Hawk convertible. And look next to it, a Studebaker Avante. Some classy cars from back in the day. Now check out that engine on this Studebaker Hawk here. This is a supercharged V8 289 cubic inch engine. And in case you were wondering, no, it is not for sale. It's just here to be admired. And you can see the interior is very plush. And like a lot of cars back in the 50s, it has fins. And you can see where the spare tire is in the back trunk. And this Studebaker Avante 2 is a 67 vintage. And check it out. It's kind of a sporty interior, but it does have back seats. And as the rear window sticker says, life's too short to drive boring cars. And this car collection has some real horsepower tucked away in the back here. Look at this. Two horsepower. And it's going to be delivering some petrol. And I sure hope they aren't feeding these horses White Castle to get them going. Here we have some very old, very early 1900 cars from the Brass Era. And I think you can see why it's called the Brass Era. As you can see, they're all trimmed out in nice, beautiful brass. Here we have a 1929 Auburn. The thing I really like most about this Auburn is this cool paint scheme. It's got this orangish stripe going down the body and it matches the wheels here and it's riding on some firestone white walls now while the paint on the exterior looks a little bit on the wild side the interior is very subdued looking because you can faintly see a little bit on the dash of the exterior paint scheme check out this big behemoth right here has anybody ever heard of a Pierce Arrow? This is a 1928 vintage. As you can see, it's a little rough around the edges. Looks a lot like a barn find. But nonetheless, a nice, complete car. Plus, the Pierce Arrow emblem gets the point across. And here we have a 1931 Packard Roadster. And as you can see, they left the golf clubs on the running board here and I guess that's the way to get your golf clubs to the golf course if you're carrying your own passengers in the rumble seat here don't have rumble seats in this modern day era they're all trunks but back in the day you could set in the trunk and they called them rumble seats because I'm sure you could feel some good vibrations back there here we have a 1958 Ford Skyliner Check out that front end, kind of reminds me a little bit of a Thunderbird from the late 50s. Now the unique thing about this Skyliner is its massive top. And it is a convertible, but it's a hard top. So it's a hard top that retracts down into this massive trunk area. Look at all that space. That is huge. And I love the interior accents on this car. Red and white. Matched to a black exterior. And like a lot of 50s cars, it has a little bit of a fin to it. The good thing about having a hard top convertible is you won't have to worry about replacing the top like you do every so often on a cloth top convertible. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I like little small cars, Japanese domestic market cars, which I own a couple. And 
right behind me is the Crosleys. They're like the miniature version that uh, America had to offer. And these are older vehicles back in the day, 1950s. They do look a little bit bigger than the Japanese key or K cars as they call them. Now, even though these cars are kind of miniature, they're still a bit bigger than my pal, other than this little uh, Crosley Farmer Road here. It's about the same size, maybe just a tad bit shorter than my pal. And even this short station wagon looks very roomy inside. You could still fit a lot of groceries or people in there. And this truck that Crosley made, it's still very practical. I mean, look, you can put your golf clubs in it. And the interior on this Crosley truck is very simplistic and bright red. And this is a cool feature on this truck, these truck mirrors from back in the day. I really like how they have a nice style to them. And no Crosley display is complete without the old Crosley radio from back in the day. Here I'm standing in a room chock full of Corvettes. As we swing this camera around, you can see there's Corvette after Corvette after Corvette. There's definitely quite a few 50s, 60s Corvettes in this collection. As you can see right through here, it goes on and on. Here we got some late 60s and 70s Corvettes. Swinging around into this little bit more modern one. This is probably the newest one in here. Now this 88 Corvette here, it may seem like a run-of-the-mill Corvette from outside appearances. Now let's look under the hood. You can see the Callaway name on the intake. And it's a twin turbo model. It's also a convertible too. Pretty cool. Now this Callaway Corvette has had some additional modifications done to it. And it makes 476 horsepower and 600 foot-pounds of torque. Quite impressive, especially for back in 1988. And hey look, the classic 50s Corvette in polo white with the red interior and a drop top. Now this is a 1954. The first year for the Corvette was 1953, which is extremely rare because the first year they only made 300 of them. Now this 54 Corvette was offered in several different colors besides the polo white, but the first year Corvette, the 1953, was only offered in the polo white color. And here we have one of the few, like one of three, cars in this car collection that is not American. Y'all know what this car is, the Back to the Future car. It's a 1982 DeLorean. And this one has the movie correct five-speed manual. Now these DeLoreans were made by John DeLorean, who is famous, some of y'all may know, some of y'all may not know, for working at Pontiac and working with General Motors. Now these cars were actually made over in Ireland and they featured a PRV V6. Now what does PRV stand for? It stands for Peugeot Renault Volvo V6. So it is a hodgepodge, a mixed match of different car manufacturers making an engine for this car. And here's a little close up of the car. As you can see, the stainless steel body meets the front end and there's quite a bit of a color difference here where it's gray in the front and a shiny bright stainless steel here and we go over to the back here same thing on the end piece it is gray doesn't quite match the rest of the body but still hey it looks cool it's one smooth looking refrigerator so we've seen a studebaker hawk a studebaker avante 2 and now we're here to see a champion what we got here is a 1948 Studebaker Convertible Champion. I like this lemon twist exterior. Made it with this kind of red wine colored interior. Very clean looking car. I like how the dash has a little bit of wood grain on it. And check out these spotlights. Remind you of an old pop car. Now, at this museum, there's a lot of old 50s cars and early 1900 cars, but here's a couple from the muscle car era of the 60s. Got an Impala here. Just love the gold finish on this car, inside and out. There's a beautiful logo right there. 
And then we got an old Ford LTD, a 1971 model. Check that out. Now both the LTD and the Impala in front of it, down there, are big size cars from the muscle car era. And I think a lot of these LTTs were used as police cars, as you can see the spotlight on this one here. And not only does this car collection have cool cars, but they also have a cool train set, as you can hear it running behind me. Cool Lionel set. This, this train layout is huge. It is massive. Takes up a lot of room. And a Corvette in the background. And as you can see, the collection not only has a lot of classic cars, but even the model railroad layout has a lot of classic cars incorporated into this play. And hey look, there's a Pontiac GTO. I'm in a Pontiac club and that's who I'm with here. Well, some other club too. The Cayenne Club. Now this 1940 Graham has some interesting styling cues. Check out the headlights. I just love the headlights on this car. Not to mention the hood ornament and the front end match the style of the headlights. Now tucked away in the back corner of this collection, see a beautiful Cadillac, but what I'm looking at behind me is a lot of big trucks. Here we got a Big Mac, not the McDonald's Big Mac, but a Mac truck. And look, there's the old mascot, the Bulldog. Usually you see them on the front of the trucks. This one's right in front of the windshield. Very interesting. And since this Mack truck sets up so high, you can see that it is actually chain driven. You get to see the inner workings underneath of it. Very cool. And if you think this Mack truck is primitive, well, it is because it's a 1926 vintage. No uh, doors, no side glass. I'm sure no air condition. Just utility. Now a little bit more modern truck is this 64 International Harvester. Now here's a very interesting part of history. Sold fire engine, but it's just a wagon. So this would have to have been pulled by a horse. And it's from 1856. This thing has survived, it's really cool. And it's interesting to see how they did it back in the 1800s. It's a pumper wagon kind of deal. And, well, this is a truck with a bed on it, but it's actually a Jeep thing. Maybe you would understand, but this is actually an old Willis. It's a 1962 Willis stake bed truck. And this is before Chrysler, AMC, before they owned Jeep. This is Willis. This is the original manufacturer of the Jeep. But obviously this is not a Jeep in the terms that we think of it as a Jeep. It's a Jeep brand of Willis. And tucked away in the corner again, yet another Jeep stake bed truck. If you live back in 1919, it's a good chance you probably caught the bus in a Chevrolet Salton bus. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Not exactly for sure. But check this out. This is what you've been riding in. Pretty stylish for back in 1919. And check out the wheels, how the pinstriping on them matches this bodywork in orange. Well, pals, I hope you enjoyed the little tour of Collection 21 out here in Erlanger, Kentucky. And you can look in the description below. They got a website, so you can come check this place out for yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to this channel. And until next time, don't worry, be random.
instead of you never run and miss another random car video. Remember, ring that bell. <laughs> ring that bell. <laughs>